Welcome to Electron Line. Sometimes we need to. Hmm. Okay. Welcome to Electron Line. There are different types of binomials and trinomials that we're supposed to factor, and it's important that we know how to recognize them, how to tell them apart. And here are some special cases which we should readily recognize. The first one is what we call the difference of squares. Now here we have only two terms, x squared minus 9, and at first it may not be apparent that this is indeed the difference of squares. It is the difference of something, the difference of x squared and 9, but you know what? You can rewrite the 9 as 3 squared, so we can write this binomial as x squared minus 3 squared. Now we have written the difference of squares. So first of all, it may not look like it, but on further inspection, we may be able to write it as a difference of squares. Next, when you factor the difference of squares, the answer is very easily. This is equal to x plus 3 times x minus 3. Notice we have x times x, and we have 3 times 3. The sign, however, can only be negative here if we have a plus and a minus there, which also causes the middle term to disappear. Therefore, the general form of the difference of squares is x squared minus a squared, where a can be any number, and that can then be written or factored as x plus a times x minus a. Therefore, it's important to recognize the difference of squares when you're asked to factor. Next, we may end up with something that's called the perfect square. If we have a trinomial like this, and the coefficient of the middle term, if we take that coefficient, divide it by 2 and square it, and we get the third number, then we have a perfect square. For example, when we take 6 and divide it by 2, we get 3. 3 squared gives us 9. Therefore, this is what we call a perfect square. If it's a, if it's a perfect square, then we can write it as the quantity x plus 3 times x plus 3, or simply the quantity x plus 3 squared. When you multiply this together, notice x times x gives you x squared. 3 times 3 gives you 9, and x times 3 gives you 3x, and 3 times x gives you 3x. 3x plus 3x together is 6x, and therefore we can see that these are equal to one another. Again, the general form of a perfect square is as follows. It is x squared plus 2ax plus a squared. Notice a can be any number, like the number 3, and if you then take the number 3 times 2, you get twice the number 3, or 2a. In other words, if you get something in this format, when you factor, you can write it as x plus a times x plus a, or simply x plus a quantity squared. And finally, you may end up with something that has a common factor already built in. Again, here you have a trinomial, but notice that each term has an x in it that you can factor out. When you do that, you can write it as x times x squared plus 6x plus 9. Oop, that's not a good looking 9. There we go. And now you see that what's in the parentheses here is exactly the same as what we have over there, which means you can factor this exactly the way you did over there, but you still have the x there that you factored out. But in other words, this can now be written as x times x plus 3 times x plus 3, or simply x times x plus 3 quantity squared. It means you have to be able to recognize these forms before you try to factor them, because there are very special factoring techniques associated with each one of them. Again, the difference of squares can be factored like this. The perfect square can be factored like this. And finally, if you have something that already has a factor in it, a common factor as we call it, you should factor out a common factor first before you try to factor the rest. And that's how it's done.